Good morning, folks. You are looking at one calm and quiet Earth-facing half of the sun. There's lots of news around the world and out into space as well. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and come in for a look at patchy coronal holes here. By the way, this is a satellite roll to keep one side of it out of the sun for too long. Not bad for a spinning satellite, actually. Let's come to the solar wind. We continue to see minor variability due to the coronal holes, but these streams are all very minor, producing no geomagnetic disruption. Let's peek in on that sun diver we saw yesterday. He did make it more into the C2 frame than I expected, then dissipated into plasma in the final approach. Goodbye, little guy. Quick look at snow records. They keep falling as we are now more than a month into northern spring. Pretty impressive. Quick look at the region in the southeastern U.S. that took the 3.7 earthquake yesterday. Obviously not scary in size, but in a scary location. About three hours after a mine collapsed to the southeast, the 3.7 struck the exact zone of the New Madrid that is expected to rock and roll periodically throughout history. This is still far afield of the 2011 uptick, but if it does reach those levels, we'll be chirping like wild. Speaking of earthquakes in the U.S., Seattle. Models are showing the vast majority of your structures are not going to withstand the shattering of the Juan de Fuca region and Cascadia, and while codes are being implemented to reinforce the buildings, that's a good deal of an entire city needing an upgrade. They are also updating the U.S. seismic hazard risk map, sort of a weird scale here with percent chances of slight damage or worse in 100 years. Either way, you do see New Madrid on there as the lone scary region in the east. Folks, we just might have the best ever use for a dark matter detector. Since they can't find magic particles, which probably don't exist anyway, they used it to observe a preposterously rare decay of Xenon-124. Its half-life, they say, is longer than the entire existence of the universe thus far. Up next, sustainability fail. So where are my die-hard Agenda 21 fans? Nobody? Okay, me either. So when they say skyscrapers are a threat to our light and sustainability, perhaps they forgot that in the Agenda 21 sustainability, all humans live in dense cities, leave nature alone, and the skyscrapers double in size. We've got geniuses running this planet, I tell you. Anyway, let's go off-world for a bit. We're looking at the larger scales of the cosmos, the cosmic web the filament skeleton of the universe, and specifically on what happens when galaxies and galaxy clusters merge, most notably what's happening with the magnetic fields. As SOFIA and numerous national labs begin delivering field dominance models over gravity and formation regions and cosmic jets, we are seeing continued modeling of the larger scales revealing the magnetic intrigue offered by the smaller scales too. Magnetic fields and plasma turbulence for the win. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.25 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.